SUNY is one of the jewels in the Empire State's crown. With 64 campuses and over 400,000 students and 3 million alumni, today's New York State without SUNY is unimaginable. But SUNY's birth was very contested. Even with bearing imprimatur of Governor Thomas Dewey, it was almost stillborn. I'm Bruce Leslie, SUNY Service Professor in the History Department of the College at Brockport. And I want to introduce you to the dramatic story of SUNY's birth. After World War II, New York was the only state without a state university. And the powerful Board of Regents wanted to keep it that way, determined to hold back the tidal wave of demand for higher education, which only a public system could satisfy. But the unexpected popularity of the GI Bill's educational benefits shone a spotlight on New York's private college's failure to satisfy the demand. So, in 1946, Governor Dewey established a Blue Ribbon Commission to consider creating a state university. By the time it reported in 1948, Governor Dewey's presidential ambitions and exposés of anti-Semitism in the private professional schools shaped his response. Although the commission recommended placing the university under regents' control, Dewey decided otherwise. The legislation passed, and Dewey launched SUNY with a flourish of his pen on April 4, 1948. But the region's powerful allies had inserted poison pet pills that severely restricted SUNY's mission and even delayed its opening for a year. Not until April 5, 1949, could the heads of SUNY's 32 campuses that enrolled a mere 32,000 students finally gather in Albany. From that modest beginning, who could have imagined today's SUNY 70 years on?